I ask both on Reddit and Instagram, what is your favorite top one adult fantasy book? Just pick one. And boy, oh boy, had a little bit more than 100 answers. And so today I bring you the top 20 best adult fantasy books according to you. As there were a lot of different answers, I categorized them in four buckets. Modern Must, Rising Stars, Classics, and then classics, but also hidden gems. And without further ado, let's start with Modern Must. The five books that you'll see in this category have been ranked based on the number of ratings, and we will start with Melazen Book of the Fallen. This seems is a really love or hate fantasy series. It's very long. It's supposed to be really epic, but also dark, very dark. At its core is a war we'll get to love, but also hate. The first book has a 3.90, but acknowledgedly it's supposed to be the weakest. And something that struck me is really interesting that not just, but several people recommended Midnight Tides, which is book five, as a point to start and just to read. It seems that it takes place in a different continent by different characters, and it can almost read as a standalone, and it's considered, at least by the ones that recommend it, to be the best one. Also check the reviews and the rating and it seems that it's that good. And we continue with the grim dark, moving to The First Law by Joe Abercrombie. In here we will have a pretty character driven series that will follow these different characters, very grey, through this world. Very dark but at the same time it's pretty humorous, the stakes are high but it's more political and we will be following three different characters. The first one is this Inquisitor before he was this amazing warrior, but you know, something happened to him. He was hurt in battle and now he is working for the Inquisition and he is torturing for life. The second one is this nobleman who is a little bit of a selfish person and hopefully he will have a little bit of an arc, but he is just figuring out his foot in this world. And the third one is this warrior that is kind of sick with that life of being the master of killings and he now it's kind of like forsaking that life and he's trying to live a little bit of a peaceful life. The first book has a 4.19 stars. We move then to my favorite, which is A Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. This is currently unconcluded and it's gonna be a while, but still I really believe that it makes sense to read it. Like it's such a joy, a very epic, high fantasy. It's very character driven, but at the same time, the plot itself, as well as the war scenes and the arc of the characters, it's incredible. And for all of those that you don't know, Brandon Sanderson, it's known because because of his endings, like the last 200 pages are always such a rush, such unforgettable moments. This is something that with Stormlight Archive, it shines. At its core, it's a war story between different species, but we will be following different characters and, you know, just falling in love with all of them. This series has the power of really getting deep into the psyche of the characters. We will see depression, anxiety, borderline personality. There's going to be a hot magic system based on biting. I cannot spoil a lot, but just know that you will need to fulfill and to become something in order to access this magic. Fast book in Stormlight, Way of Kings, has a 4.65 stars. And then we move to the King Keller Chronicles with the first book, Name of the Wind. And similar to what happens with the first ones, we have a lot of a love or hate kind of reaction with the Name of the Wind, mainly because we will follow this character, Quoth, who is telling his own story. So we will have this not really reliable character telling the story. And so we will have these two moments, the present, which is him just narrating the story. And then the story itself and we will pass through the different stages of his life and yeah both it's kind of like his own hero and that's what really makes it a little bit complex for a lot of people to connect in my case that happened but still i can see why so many people love it it's epic it has magic and it has so many good moments currently has a 4.52 stars very loved because it has like 800 thousand reviews like a lot and concluding this category we have song of ice and fire with the first book the game of thrones it has been rated by 2 million users and it has a 4.44 rating and what is to say about this series first it's deeply character driven but again the stakes are so high and the twist and turns are so gripping there's going to be a huge cast here so at the beginning it's a little bit intimidating to get to know all of the different characters but soon you will get to know them and the points of view, although there are multiple, you know, you would just die to know what happens. It's very political and although it has a magic element,
element, it's not a core point here. The main thing, it's the dynamics between the people and, you know, the treason, the bloodshed. And let's move to Rising Stars. These are books that are everywhere. The order here, it's also the number of ratings that it had. And we will start with the Dandelion series by Ken Liu with the first one, Grace of Kings. It currently has a 3.75 stars. It's a nation pipe fantasy. It's supposed to be a good blend between a character and a plot tree event. It seems that the second book is just chef's keys and really it's everywhere now it seems that it follows the story of two men and they were banding together in order to overthrow the emperor of the empire but when this happened it seems that they find each other in different lines of what's supposed to be happening and it seems that they quickly became kind of enemies we go then to the green bone saga by fun lee with the first one jade city currently has a 4.11 stars and it's kind of like this blend of a northern fantasy with the godfather attached to it with magic that it's basically that if you have this element you will turn into a super person deeply character driven but again what is happening the stakes are so high and you never will know what happens you have this fear of the characters of knowing or not knowing what will happen to them and we will have this land where they have control of the jade and whoever wears a jade has powers as well so you can become super strong super powerful all of that although it's not really easy and not everyone can wear this jade and we'll see this city where there are two main bands competing for the control of the jade and also the control of the people and we will follow one of these two bands the first one i've read and i just loved it so much this woman is a genius and then we move to the books of babel with the first one sending a sense this one has a 4.14 stars and it seems that it's a book that it's not for everyone because the pros that josiah bancroft has it's a little bit of a special one it seems that it's twisted that it's a little bit bizarre but at the same time it's really gripping so it's a blend that I'm not sure if I will love but we will follow Senlin as he and his wife are going for the honeymoon to the Tower of Babel. This tower has different rings and each ring has kind of like a different world completely but once they get there his wife disappears and from that point onward we will see Senlin trying to recover his wife and now we'll do a huge leap in terms of the amount of ratings that we have because we pass for less than 50,000 reviews to just more than 150 with the first one the poppy war by rf kwang it currently has a 4.14 stars and this is a savage story very character driven as well and we will be following our main character that is gray it's really a story that will turn your inside out we will follow this girl that it's just working so hard to get into this elite school and once that she gets there she starts training she discovers that she might have a little bit of powers but soon after a war starts to unravel and everyone in this school starts to get also involved in this war and what we will see is how our different characters will play this role in how really war will change them. It's going to be a lot of politics, also a lot of war. Once I finished this, I was like, no, I reject everything that has happened in this trilogy. But through time, I've learned to love it. And I really believe that if you're looking for a book to make you feel alive, this is the one because you will feel a lot of stuff that you will like to forget. And last in this category, and the only standalone that I have in this list, we have Piranesi. A lot of people were like, you need a lot of focus, you need commitment in order to understand. It's not that it's big or huge, but that the writing style is full of metaphors. And we will follow Piranesi, and in his house, it seems that every room, it's almost as a different world. And there's another person in this house called The Other. And this person visits Piranesi twice a week, asking him help with the research that is happening. And as this research happens, it seems that Piranesi will start to discover that they might be another person emerging in this house. And there seems that there's a truth waiting to be uncovered. It has the highest rating with a 4.25. And now we move to classics. And in here, you'll see them ranked based on the year of the release. And we will start with Lot of the Rings by Tolkien, which was published in 1944, currently has a 4.38 stars. And although a lot of people is now kind of saying that it does not hold up to modern fantasy, and I have not read it 
it was one of the books that was the most recommended to me. What is to say about this? An incredible quest with amazing different races, a huge variety of characters, of cities, of magic. At its core, a good versus evil kind of story. Then we moved to Dune, published in 1965. Currently has a 4.25 stars and I reckon it has been talked about a lot lately, also due to the movie. I have not read this, but again, one of the ones that was mentioned the most and in here we'll have this amazing story where we will see different houses, different politics and at the end the exploit of the resources in another planet and the fight for it. Seems that it's a good blend between character and plot driven. We go now to a massive amount of works that come together under the umbrella of the Discworld by Terry Pratchett. First one, Color of Magic, an average of four stars. Terry Pratchett is known because of his humor and this series overall can only must be read as a standalone, like their collection of stories that which characters move together, but each book has a beginning and ending which make it really accessible, although there are like 41 books throughout the Discworld world. In here we'll have books that are terribly humor, really satiric, and you know it's something that really it's a little bit bizarre as well. We will start with the premise that we have this world that it's flat, that is weighted in the shoulders of elephants that are just balancing at the top of the toro. That is just the starting point. You'll see a lot of magic here and we will do again a leap here and changing with Wheel of Time which was published firstly in 1990. These and the following one might not really consider classics or like the line between if it is a classic or if it is modern I believe it was not as clear. I just draw the line in the 2000s but let me know if there are other classics that I'm missing that you'd like other readers to know. But nonetheless Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan currently has 4.19 stars. It's a high fantasy, very epic with a very thrilling magic system well we will see different points of view here. At its core it's a battle between what's good and what's evil. You'll see friendship, you'll see romance, you'll see politics and it's considered to be a very good blend between character and plot driven. And last but not least we have the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. This was published in 1995. It has a 4.17 and this is considered to be very character driven, very slow paced, but that the characters itself are really well fleshed out. They're going to be great characters. So there's no huge fantastic errorism, you know, or these moments where you see clearly who is good and who is bad. And this we will follow different characters. One of these is of this royal bastard that seems to have the power of the wit, which seems to be the ability to communicate with animals, which is not really appreciated by the novels. And so he will need to kind of forsake his ability when he is adopted in this royal family where he will start training how to be a royal assassin. And in the last category we have classic hidden gems. I did not know any of them and I bet these books are going to surprise you although people were really heated recommending them like there was honest passion on their comments even describing them so I could not avoid adding them here. Majority of them had less than 50,000 reviews and there's a lot of them with less than 5,000. So truly hidden gems ranked based on the number of ratings. And we'll start with the Ethshire series, which is composed of 14 books. So a little bit intimidating, although it seems that each book can be read as a standalone. The first one, The Misenchanted Sword, was published in 1985 and it currently has a 4.03 stars. It follows this empire that is at war and it seems no one is able to see when this is gonna end. But things might change when this wizard creates this sword that makes it fairer and beatable. Then we go to the Wizard Knight duology, which is less of a classic, I guess, because it was also published in 2004. It has 3.75 stars and this is considered to be a read that draws a lot from classic and Arthurian and Norse mythology, but creating something unique with also an ending that it's worth of Sanderson. So really, you got me there. Then we go to the Chronicles of Master Lee and the number 10 series which is composed by mainly three books and the first one is Bridge of Birds. This won the World Fantasy Award in 1985. It's a nation inspired story. It talks about a young peasant that is as strong as an ox and also of a nation sage. It's supposed to draw a lot of 
Asian mythology, but it also will have a lot of mystery thriller and it seems that it has some Sherlock Holmes points to it. So really, I guess all of that justifies the 4.28 stars that it has. We go then to the world of the five gods, which is composed mainly by three works, published also in 2001, so maybe not a classic. First book, Cus of Charlian, has a 4.16 stars and it seems to follow the story of this soldier that comes from war, like really torn only to be thrown into these political intrigues that reside in his home. And last but not least, we have the Chronicles of Predane, published in 1964. It has a 3.98 and it's considered to be almost like a lot of the rings but for a younger audience kind of vibe it seems to be classical, funny, exciting as well as being really emotional. We made it. Let me know down below which one was your favorite, the category or if you have other elements that you would like also to share. I cannot wait to chat afterwards. If you want to keep seeing adult fantasy but maybe shorter I will link here a top 10 fantasy standalones that are my favorite.